Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Team 14, Jose, it's Mark. The rest of you, please. Thank you. Thank you. And our senior design project is a lunar excavation robot. Uh, we designed this robot based off of specifics uh, given to us by NASA's lunar robotics competition. And NASA, this competition itself is a university-level design competition aimed at STEM majors. And since we're engineers, we represent that E and STEM. And the challenge for students is design a lunar excavation robot. You send this robot to the moon, it's going to mine lunar material. And NASA benefits from this competition by getting innovative design concepts from us students, like things they like, they'll take it from. And then winners of this competition will get $5,000 in a team scholarship. We want to design this robot in order to test our capabilities in building a robot, but also and to stimulate additional like, interest within STEM-related uh, fields within not only our school, maybe some of our main campus and the community as well. And then we need to explore innovations in this uh, robot design, see if we can get autonomous, see what we can do, see if we can do anything that goes surprise ourselves. And also because our individual team members ourselves, we all have this interest in robotics. Um, these are objectives given us to by NASA. Um, we started off by designing within physical size limitations, the height, length, and width. NASA also told us that you could this upon oper when it starts operating, you could expand on that. Like you have different limitations in size, we'll expand on that later. And we wanted to touch upon other points such as dust-free operation. Um, it being self-powered, we want to be used on tele, tele, tele robotic operation. That's a mouthful. And then this is the arena that the robots would run should they enter the competition. It starts over there on the left, and then moving through an obstacle course, not like big rocks and boulders, and maneuver through that, collect material within this mining area, and then maneuver back and deposit the collected material within the receptive bins. Our initial design included an augered red blade. It was spin at high RPMs, kicking up the lunar material into this, this enclosed bin for dust reparation. And then over the vacuum, we'll propel the material into this collection bin, and the bin itself will be lifted and tilted in order to deposit the material within the receptacle. Yes, you can hear. However, as per Mark's suggestion, we can't, I'm not sure how to use vacuum to space. So we decided to go with a very enclosed, integrated thing. You see, we have the auger inside of span high RPMs. The material will be propelled into the interior of this band, and a conveyor belt system will lift that thing and then deposit it into the receptacle. We chose a conveyor belt too, so we don't have to lift the bin too high up. That's a lot of things we're going to deal with. And also, this is an open frame design. You notice that there's no bars in between here, allowing for the bin itself to lift and lower. However, we do have one bar in the back tying the whole thing together. This is the third design. It's based off, it's following the same design language as our second design, except we remodeled it based off components that we received from previous teams. You notice that we have a different frame now, and we have a different looking auger, but it's still the same integrated bin like a variable. Running SOLIDWORKS simulations, we applied forces on the leading edge of the auger as it will spin forward, it will bite into the material and propel it. And we also have, um, we applied uh, forces here along the shaft because since it's driven here by a gear and a belt attached to the motor, there will be a twist within the shaft. For the bin itself, it's fixed along the pivot point. Remember that the bin will go up and down along this point. Those two arrows on the left uh, represent the weight of the auger, the motor itself. And inside, like I wasn't able to get it inside, but inside we have we applied forces for not only the weight of the material collected, but the conveyor system as well. This is the frame. We applied fixed points here along the axles, so that's where it's going to fix. And then we have um, loads applied for where the actuator will act on the frame, lifting and lowering the bin. And then here along this pivot bar where the bin is over. So, so as Zen has mentioned, um, we did acquire uh, components uh, from previous teams. This one uh, is actually a frame donated from uh, Team 7. It's a welded aluminum frame, which has a triangular geometry, which provides more structural integrity and rigidity. Uh, we modified it slightly by removing these bars, um, using this plate to hold the motors uh, and remove the general motors. For the auger, this, this too was donated uh, by Team Pantera. Um, and this is the same plate they actually use in their uh, uh, Ludabot which is from the, the Snow Joe Snow Thrower. Uh, so we had to change a little bit of our design. Um, but this is driven um, with a belt. You can't see it here, but it's driven by a belt uh, attached to a radiator fan motor. For the collector bin, uh, this is made out of acrylic glass. We got all of our dimensions from SolidWorks. Uh, laid that out onto the acrylic glass, cut that out, fixed them together with uh, L brackets and screws, 
and uh, the edges would be sealed with silicon to provide for dust-free operations. And this is the conveyor system that we uh, that we made. It is a prototype. Um, as you can see, that we are using wood. Uh, the wooden dowels are screwed with uh, the gears, uh, press fitted into the wooden blocks, and the motor itself kind of acts as a, a tensioner, um, and thus propelling the conveyor belt. We designed it originally for track wheels, um, but we opted for a modularity between track wheels and, and in this case, a hard plastic wheel, uh, mostly for ease of use and cost. Uh, this is the finished prototype that we, that we built. Um, as you can see, the linear actuators, uh, these two were do donated um, from Team 7. Uh, they are rather long, so we compensated uh, for that with the, the brackets that you can see attached to the frame. Um, and here you have the, the auger, the driving system, and the conveyor belt located inside of the bin. And here's our, our total cost for the project. Uh, more than half of it was spent on uh, electronics. Um, as you can see, there are many components that have been repurposed, uh, salvaged, um, for the sake of the project, uh, thus uh, providing for a total of about $545. And for the electronics, we use uh, just various components such as Arduino, Omega, uh, the XB, and a four channel motor driver. All right, as Mark said, um, we used an Arduino Mega with uh, XB shield for wireless, control, for wireless control. It's connected to a four channel motor driver. Uh, the good thing about this motor driver is it uses, it controls speed, direction, as well as if we wanted to attract the motors, we could add encoders. They have encoder pins. Um, two channels are uh, connected to the DC motors of the wheel, and the other two are connected to the actuators that control the height of the bin. Um, unfortunately, this motor driver, it, it proved sound in previous robots I've built, but uh, due to the unexpected high currents we were dealing with this time, we, um, we ended up frying the motor driver, um, as you can see, uh, through these transistors. Um, so for the next method, we tried going with a relay system, uh, but the, with the relay system, you can't control the speed, nor can you control the directions. Uh, so to control the directions using relays, we'd have to use two relays per motor in order to control the polarities of the motors, um, and the speed uh, would be at max speed on each motor. Uh, for the convey and the auger, they could, they could um, go with just one relay because they're only running in one direction uh, as well as at the top speeds. Um, this video um, is a test of the relays, which uh, in the first test you'll see I ran a code that just turns on the relay and it constantly stays on to run the, um, the radiator fan motor. And then in the second uh, test, I used a code which uh, it turns on and off the relay to make sure that the relay switches on and off. So in this test, you can see it's continuously running. It ran straight. Um, the current is flowing straight from the battery to the motor. In this test, it's hard to see because of the camera, um, but if you look, you can see the jerk of the um, every every second it turns on, every um, other second it turns off. So. Um, to wrap up the electronics portion, um, Due to hardware failures, we were unable to implement the electronics portion, but if we were to go with, um, in the future-wise, to, con to connect a proper electrical system, we'd either go for a stronger motor driver or we'd use the relay system I just uh, talked about. And this is a video of the actuators. This is the actual mechanical testing um, stages that we went through. Um, at this height, the auger would be engaged and it would be the digging. And then when we're getting ready to travel around here or a little higher, it would be the ride height to avoid any rocks, obstacles, or anything like that. And at the max height, the conveyor belt would engage and we'd be dumping the material. And this is a test of the conveyor system, which, um, we eventually got the conveyor running. Um, it functioned as expected. So from this stage, we go ahead and um,
take the measurements and the uh, prototype wood and we'd, mach we'd use machined out parts um, in replace of the wooden parts for actual uh, use. But we're also planning on putting some plastic brackets along the, along the belt in order to scoop up more of the material as, we know, as it runs. And in this test, this is the auger um, test using the high RPM um, radiator fan. In the first test, the one side of the auger is threaded, so as it's spun, it unthreads itself out of the, uh, the mount. So in the second test, you'll see we, um, we fixed it, we uh, fixed the thread so that it prevented the auger from... <laughs> <laughs> Don't try this at home. <laughs> and this is the second test. We fix that issue so it doesn't unthread itself. So as you can see at the high RPMs, it would act as its own uh, digging. As, as it digs, it also would collect a lot of um, material. And this is uh, the motor driving, the test of the, the driving system. If the electronics were connected, this uh, would act um, the first test we used just um, one battery for the, both of the, the DC motors, but like I said, the high current caused the wires to heat up extremely quickly. Um, so to compensate for this, the second test we used two separate batteries on two each of the motor, the DC motors, which they stayed. Um, it, it operated uh, more efficiently. And for this test, this is just uh, <laughs> a test of, <laughs> of the functioning system. So in conclusion, um, we're able to see that it is possible to build a Lunavok functioning uh, within a confined budget. Um, but we did notice that um, most likely, if you're going to undertake a project like this, you would have to have an interdisciplinary team uh, because we were very limited um, in electronics. You know, uh, we had many weeks. Complicated complications just came up, um, but you know, an inter interdisciplinary team would uh, streamline the design. Um, yeah, uh, and lastly, precision is key, uh, especially in designing the components such as the conveyor belt, because uh, we we had problems. Um, because if one thing is off, the whole system would not work and there, there wouldn't be enough uh, tension in the conveyor belt. Um, so yeah. And a quick note uh, for the electronics portion. We did spend a lot of time on electronics and it did eventually take um, the electrical engineer for the next uh, Lunar Bodics team to help with uh, pro troubleshooting our issue with the current. So the main lessons learned there is to incorporate multidisciplinary strategies when you're doing a project like this. That, that was going to be my question, but you took care of it in your conclusion. Any other questions? So are you intending to compete? No. Um, we're not at the time, but we're not too bad. Like, we're not, we don't plan on competing. We still plan on working with this afterwards because after putting so much enough hours, and it holds a little bit of sentiment about it. So we want to see it up and running on the whole relay system that I talked about. So I guess if you guys are still around, please look forward to it. Next competition? What do you do? I'm sorry? Next competition? What do you do? Next competition will be next year in May. May. However, this is our last. A, there is a team built in May. Yes. Um, and they're working on it this semester. Dr. Basil. Oh, okay. I guess I'll play my part as devil's advocate. Um, I've seen, I've been here three semesters for senior design. I think every semester someone did Luna Bodies competition. Uh, the previous two semesters that I saw, they both were able to have a functioning controlling, tro controllable, movable robot. I'm curious, how, how come you didn't take the lessons learned from those two semesters and translate it into your project? I guess to begin with, they're not here. Okay, but the reports are on the website. They sure. are on the website. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the expertise is still there. Yeah. Um, I think, um, really, I don't feel 
because I have my doubts about that, how how far along they actually got it working. And um, like I said, current, in all of the robots I've previously built, current always becomes the issue. Um, either you're not, you don't have enough current to drive the amount of motors you need, or you have more, way more current than you anticipated, and you end up frying your electrical system. So I do feel like we could have gotten it running um, if we had um, one. If we had if we had enough um, resources in order to get to overcompensate for what I was expecting, then I think we'd have been all right. Or if uh, say I was to order it from now, like I, I could get them. I know which motors we need, uh, motor drives we need now that. See, see why point though, right? I mean, yeah, the previous right. teams probably all had this sort of thing. So we need a good system to you know, the, keep the motors of the together. games are different. They change every competition. So I, I understand that, but there um, should be less of learn, but they always keep changing that. Like I said, sure, but uh, a functional robot should still be e easily achievable, I would think, at some point, right? I mean, the other two teams at least had the functioning robot in front of us, and most of them drove it around. Right. So. I would just say, in a generalized term, I think it's what it is. But, uh, can you guys help out the next set of people that come along? We yeah, have course, one with phone. Oh, that's a perfect. Okay. One. They've they've learned a lot from us too because their their robot okay, yeah. is using much bigger uh, motors and a much bigger um, propulsion system. So uh, one quick one: Why do you guys have such big batteries? I mean, it seems like. A ton of these little robots go all around. Why, why did you hold those? Oh, it was a mismatch group plan. It's, okay. it's not numbers. really the okay. batteries. Right. That's no, I know. I mean, there's issue. a whole set of it's, yeah, issues it's, it's with what I would think. To the, power two, two axles to move around, you could yeah. probably do that with a couple of B batteries or something like that. No, well, I think what it was, because the way I've, I've understood current through this project is it's, it's not really how much current your battery puts out because sure. it's, it's, it's how much the Amen. motors are calling for. So if the, the motors are calling for 10 amps and your battery is only at 7, it's only going to do so much. So um, really it's, it's all, and I think we had enough current from the source, just the electrical portion couldn't handle the amount of current we were pushing, the motors were calling for. So, Any other questions, Dr. Basil? Nope, I'm good. <laughs> All right. Okay, um, how did your project address the, uh, the global elements? Um, I guess I guess to answer that, um, I guess showing that building a robot under a combined budget, under $700 is feasible. Um, I guess other countries um, don't have that much of a that many resources are capable of doing such a project like this to be able to compete uh, if they wanted to. How did you address it in your slides? Do you have a slide that spoke to that? Okay. Well, you know that that was a, a significant element on the criteria for evaluation. So, all right. No further questions. Thank you, guys.